Well, I appreciate the invitation of the Federal Society to be here. Uh, I have to say, though, uh, I guess if I was taking Professor Hyde's class, he'd probably flunk me because I disagree with uh, the assessment he gave you. In fact, uh, I would predict that uh, Judge Bolton's decision is going to be overturned on appeal, and in fact, I completely disagree with his interpretation of uh, other statutes. Let, let's get to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is this provision, which says that if you are stopped, detained, or arrested for some other legitimate reason or crime, if the police officer has a reasonable suspicion about your immigration status, they can check it. Now, that's pretty clear language, right? But to show you how Judge Bolton, who issued the uh, temporary injunction, how she had to torture the language of this statute and ignore uh, prior precedent, other, other cases that come to the illogical conclusion that this provision was granted by federal law, get her opinion and read it. You know what she says? Oh, she says, no, 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 this provision doesn't say that they'll only check immigration status if uh, the officer has a reasonable suspicion. No, this provision says they have to check the immigration status of every single person arrested. Now, you look at that language, how could she come up with that, that possible uh, view of it? Now, Professor Hyde says this is preempted by federal law. Well, let's talk about federal law. <coughs> there is a provision in federal law that was passed by Congress in the mid-1990s uh, that says, 8 U.S.C. 1373, it says that it requires, doesn't say may, it requires federal officials to, quote, respond to an inquiry by a federal, state, or local government agency seeking to verify or ascertain the citizenship or immigration status of any individual. Okay, so Congress passed a federal law telling the federal government, at that time it was INS, today it's ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement telling them that they have to respond to an inquiry from local and state government agencies or officials asking about the immigration status of, of someone. And not only that, but Congress appropriated the money and they established over at the Department of Homeland Security now uh, something called the Law Enforcement Support Center, which is administered by ICE. <laughs> It serves as the National Enforcement Information Center, and even as the United States admitted in its brief, in the case that it filed, quote, Congress established the LESD to provide alien status determination support to federal, state, and local law enforcement on a 24-hour-a-day, seven-days-a-week basis. Now, in fiscal year 2005, the LESC received over 500,000 calls from local law enforcement in all 50 states. It's almost, it's, you know, almost 1,400 calls a day. That high volume shows you that local law enforcement officials all over the country have long been involved in checking the immigration status of individuals that they arrest. If the Obama administration claimed in its brief that an increase in the number of requests for determination of immigration status, if this Arizona law went into effect, um, would basically interfere with their policy priorities with regard to national security and other matters. Now, I suggest you all take out a copy of the Constitution and take a look at the Supremacy Clause. And if you read the Supremacy Clause, what does it say? It says that laws passed by Congress, the U.S. Constitution, and treaties that have been approved by the Senate shall be the supreme law of the land. Not the enforcement, or I should say lack of enforcement priorities or policies of the executive branch. And yet Judge Bolton said in her opinion, quote, the number of requests that will emanate from Arizona as a result of determining the status of every arrestee is likely to impermissibly burden federal resources and redirect federal agencies away from the priorities they have established. Now, how can the judge uh, rationally conclude that Arizona is placing an impermissible burden on the federal government to respond to citizenship verification requests when federal law passed by Congress says 
They have to. And the only reason that the Obama administration filed suit is because they didn't want to have to respond to this, even though federal law says they have to. I mean, her, her uh, reasoning is foolish. She's treating the enforcement priority of the administration as if that is federal law that preempts uh, state law enforcement. Um, it also conflicts with all kinds of other cases. For example, there's a case called Estrada versus uh, Rhode Island. Uh, First Circuit, uh, in which the courts upheld and said that state law enforcement officers can check the immigration status of individuals detained for other reasons, such as a traffic stop. And in fact, the U.S. Supreme Court in 2005, in a case, case called uh, Mueller versus Mina, unanimously, unanimously, they had a case in which um, Local police were uh, serving a search warrant on a house, and they detained one of the individuals who was in the house, a woman who was there, um, and they became suspicious about her immigration status, and they checked it. The Supreme Court said that a local police have the authority to inquire into immigration status of individuals who have been lawfully Okay, so there's no question in my mind, and, and we have other cases in many of the other circuits, that uh, Arizona actually went further than they needed to. I didn't even need to put in a provision about having to have a reasonable suspicion. They could have put in a provision saying, we're, we're going to check the immigration status of every single person we stop or arrest. And let me ask you all a question. I don't know how many of you have been stopped by the state patrol for speeding on the side on the highway. You know, what happens to you when that happens? They ask for your driver's license, right? And the cop goes back to his car or her car. And what do you think they're doing with your driver's license? They're checking your ID, and they're checking the National Crime Information System to see if there are any outstanding state warrants on you in other states, or if there are any outstanding federal warrants on you. Now, how is it somehow suddenly going to be different or unconstitutional if in addition to checking whether there are outstanding federal warrants on you, that they're also checking to see whether uh, ICE has a detainer warrant for you because you're here illegally and you've been ordered out of the country. There's no difference in kind between the two. If, if what Professor Hyde said is correct, what Judge Bolton said is correct, that is somehow a, uh, a problem constitutionally to check on immigration status, someone who's been arrested, well obviously uh, local police should have no ability to stop you if there's a federal warrant out for your arrest. So if you've robbed a bank and the FBI has a warrant out for you and local police stop you, they're going to have to let you go. They can't, uh, they can't enforce that. Now, the idea of racial profiling came up and in fact both President Obama and the Attorney General said that, that this law would uh, cause racial profile. Of course, they both admitted they hadn't read the statute. In fact, Holder admitted that in questioning before a, a House committee where uh, he was there as they were supervising the Justice Department. Well, you can pull up the complaint that was filed in this lawsuit. There's no claim of racial profiling in it at all. Why? Well, because it specifically says you cannot use race uh, when you're making a determination. So in fact, they didn't file suit because they knew they would have lost. Um, another reason they didn't uh, uh, call, say anything about racial profiling was because they would have had a real problem with what the federal government does in this area. In 2003, the Department of Justice issued guidelines which were called Guidance Regarding the Use of Race by Federal Law Enforcement Agencies. It outlines how federal law enforcement agencies could use race or not use race in uh, uh, enforcing federal law. This guidance specifically says that in border protection activities, they can consider race or ethnicity to the extent permitted by the Constitution and laws of the United States. 
which is almost exactly the same language that you see in this uh, Arizona statute. Those standards also said, and again, I quote, they do not affect current federal policy with respect to law enforcement activities and other efforts to defend and safeguard against threats to national security or the integrity of the nation's borders. There's no such exception in the Arizona law. So in fact, the Arizona law on racial profiling is stricter than the federal guidelines issued by the Department of Justice. And if the department had actually included a racial profiling claim in the lawsuit they filed, uh, Arizona could have defended it by saying it by attaching a copy of the guidelines issued by the Department of Justice and saying, look, our guidelines are stricter than what you outline for other federal law enforcement agencies. Now, some might be able to say or claim that, well, you know, these guidelines were issued in 2003, they were issued by the Bush administration, uh, the Obama administration doesn't follow these guidelines. Well, I checked the website of the Department of Homeland Security right before I came down here. And in fact, those guidelines are referenced in the memorandum of agreement that locals have to enter into if they participate in the 287G program. Anybody know what that is? One of the things that Congress did uh, when they reformed uh, and made some amendments to federal immigration law was they created this program it's called the 287G program. Okay? And it's a program that local law enforcement agencies can sign up for. They enter into a memorandum of agreement with the uh, Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security comes in, gives them money, and trains their local law enforcement officials in how to enforce federal immigration law. And the memorandum of agreement that they have to sign says that they will agree to abide by these guidelines that I just referenced. Um, if you look at the enforcement of federal immigration law. Uh, there's a difference between concurrent enforcement of the law and setting immigration <coughs> policy. And I think that is the confusion that uh, people come up with when they look at the case. Uh, the Pennsylvania case the professor was talking about, there Pennsylvania was trying to set up a separate immigration policy on when people would be considered aliens and when they wouldn't be. That's not what Arizona has done. In fact, what Arizona has done is really any different than what states all over the country are doing, including, by the way, the state we're in right now, New Jersey. In fact, there was an affidavit that was filed in the uh, lawsuit, uh, filed against Arizona by the Department of Justice, that pointed out that, uh, you know, here the Justice Department was saying they really didn't want to get all these inquiries from Arizona. Yet, in August of 2007, what did New Jersey start doing? They started checking the immigration status of everyone arrested for a felony or a DUI. Okay? No reasonable suspicion. If you're arrested for a felony in this state, or you're arrested for DUI, they check your immigration status, period. Uh, DHS had no problem handling those new requests, even though the number of inquiries doubled in that year because of what was coming in from uh, New Jersey. So, you know, the idea that you can't have concurrent registration is simply untrue. The other point I made, which some of the professor did cover, is, I'm sorry, but there is a federal statute, you know, 8 U.S.C. 1304, that requires all aliens from, uh, to carry their alien registration uh, uh, documents. Um, there is documentation that you have to carry, and that includes people who are here, from countries that uh, you don't have to get a, a visa, but what you get is a receipt when you come in and it's put in your passport. And they've simply made what is already a violation of federal law also a violation of, uh, of state law. How much time? Uh, five minutes, five almost. Minutes. Okay. Um, I do want to talk about two other things, okay? One of the problems with the law is that you often have these theoretical discussions that leave out the practical problems uh, that the law entails or that a law is supposed to solve. And, you know, comparisons, trying to compare this to Japanese detentions during World War II, I think, is.